Hey guys, today I am going to talk about investors are getting really angry now. So I'm still looking at collections, not really buying them. They really have to be perfect for me to buy. The economy is very tough right now. Um, extremely difficult to move cards. It doesn't matter if it's a magic sports card, whatever. Um, there's always a new, better, shiny product of reprints. For Magic the Gathering, like it, it really honestly is, why not buy some Commander Legends where it just reprinted everything? I mean, the cards are only going to get cheaper. The value of your collection, assuming even if it's reserved list, alpha, beta, it's gone down significantly. Even if it's sealed reserved list boxes, it's just not, you know, a lot of these pricing and uh, we can talk about the interest rates and the Fed interest rate. Where there's a lot of things to talk about that are probably better left out this video, but there's many, many factors. It's not one factor. It is a bunch of factors all happening at the same time, all having a impact on the value of the collection. However, most people, they don't want to know. They do not know or they feign ignorance or maybe they live in, you know, ignorance is bliss. And then when they go, so they put all this money into buying magic cards and as an investment, um, and now they're coming to sell, especially sealed box investors, and there's not a market for it. So in, this has always been my problem is the liquidity. So if you buy a stock or a bond, you press a button and it's sold. You get the money that it says on the screen. If you're okay with it, you press a button and sold. Maybe there are minor, minor fees. For me, there's no trading fees, but maybe for your account there is. But at the end of the day, you get the money instantaneously. If you want to sell a magic collection, you gotta put in the work. A lot of people want a very high price without actually putting in the work to make it a high price. So like, in, let me just put it on a uh, TCG player. Like you need a reputation, you need to have some sales before, you need to like lower your price to be very, very low. If somebody, let's say there's a $5 card and the person has 10,000 positive reviews and you have that same card and you wanna sell it quickly and to get one review, you have zero reviews, you spend the time to make the account, you spend the time to put up the pictures, the inventory, all this stuff. You gotta probably put it at $4 to really interest somebody for that risk. The risk is that you're a nobody. The risk is that you won't ship as fast as that guy or the condition won't be as described and so on. There is a risk to buying from somebody with no reviews, the same with eBay. Uh, people ask me, you know, hey, there's this eBay seller named Kid Icarus or even Alpha Investment. Why can they sell cards for way more money than you are booster boxes, whatever they're selling? Because they have a reputation, they have positive reviews, and this matters a lot when you're buying cards. It, it does, you know? Like, does the guy know what he's doing? Does the guy take care of his cards? Is it gonna be shipped the right way? Is it gonna be shipped on time? Or is it gonna delay and delay and delay? Who knows? Like, people want, investors are really stupid people um, for Magic the Gathering. They want the highest price for their boxes, but not understanding that they're not alpha investment. They're not even some dude on eBay with 100 positive reviews. That guy may be able to sell for 90 or 85% of what alpha investment sells for most of the time. You are a dude with zero reviews, zero liquidity. You need to work really hard. You're not a known eBay seller. You're just some dude who thought this was an investment opportunity because alpha investment told you. And the goal, he never said, it's in the name, you dumbasses. Like, if somebody's calling themselves sports card investor, what do they say? What do they say? I mean, if someone calls them alpha investment and makes videos about magic, I mean, if only, I mean, what? Oh, if only, like, there was a word in the name of the channel which indicated what you should do. Hmm, I wonder what that word could be. Investment. Oh, yeah, it would be called investment. I think a lot of people are very, very pissed off and rightfully so because they thought it was easy. They thought they just buy a box, put it in their garage, put it in their living room and it just goes up to the moon. It goes up to the moon and there's nothing bad that can happen. Nothing bad can happen in a box, right? Not realizing that to liquidate the box, it's not that easy to sell. But if it, you do want to sell to Rudy, you're going to pay 10 cents on the, he's going to pay you 10 cents in a dollar. He's shown this before when he was buying your, the boxes he sold you 
the offer he gives is so low that like, you're just like, what, 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 is this real? And I've had people approach me still today. Most of the boxes I have, unfortunately, are people who bought from Rudy, tried to sell back to Rudy and was not able to for a price they wanted to. So they sold to me for two times, two times as much money. That's how much Rudy is paying on these collections. And maybe he's right. Maybe Rudy was a smart one. Maybe you should pay like pennies on these collections because they are worthless. So anyway, back to the investment and liquidation. Liquidating magic cards is a lot of hard work if you've never done it before. If you don't have a retail store, if you don't have an eBay account with hundreds, if not thousands of positive reviews, if you don't have a TC, if you don't have an outlet, you don't have a YouTube channel, you're going to not be able to liquidate it. And it's a very simple formula in my math is the more subscribers I have, the easier it is for me to liquidate because the more people who want to support me. And maybe they're not buying at the lowest price, but they're buying because they want to support a local game store and maybe they play in my game store. Whatever it is, you don't have. So when you come to my store and you want to sell your collection for 100% of comps, understand that a collection there are you know things that i do not want in your collection and probably most of it there are things that i think are very bad in your collection and i would not want to touch because i think they'll be reprinted or something will happen maybe power crap whatever it is i i believe would happen i am basically cold turkey stopping buying magic club pokemon collections i'm still interested in but i'm really really picky now because I've been burnt so badly on buying this shit and now I'm in a serious relationship and the dating is expensive, the travel is expensive. Even dog care when you travel is super expensive. I think my groomer's coming uh, Friday and it'll probably be, you know, it's probably another hundred dollars for two, two dogs now and a cat. Uh, the cat does not get probably more than a hundred. I, mean, I don't know, the month, the, it, it's not cheap. It is not cheap having an animal in today's economy or having a pet in today's economy. And I have a bunch of them. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm just gonna save money and just kind of not buy stuff. I already have so much unopened inventory. I just slowly open it, I guess. Remember, it's not an investment. On, it's not an investment on, unless you can sell it. If you cannot sell it, then it's a collection. It's a collector item. I mean, there's no shame in buying an item because you like it and it's awesome, but don't buy sealed boxes because that's no fun unless you want plan to open them. Um, just understand that when you when time comes to sell it, there will be some extra work that you have to put. You're not going to get max. You're not going to get max value for minimal work. That's simply not how cards work, right? Um, you got to put in the work, and the more work you put in, the more close to what you would probably expect in the open market, the, the closer the market rate. If you don't want to put in work, then you can sell for 10 cents to Rudy Chan. I mean, that's just how life works, right? And then Rudy Chan will put in the work and he has a network, he has subscribers, he has a Patreon, he's got an eBay account with a lot of positive reviews. That stuff took work for him to do, but now that he has it, it takes him less work to sell a booster box. I, I'm just putting it this way. If you sell a War of the Spark booster box and you don't have a TCG player or account or an eBay account or a YouTube channel, it's going to be very difficult to sell for anything close to the 150. I can probably sell it for 120, 130. I get offers on the time, emails to try to buy me out. Uh, I have no reason to sell it because I don't need the money and B, I'd probably just open the box on the channel. Why not? For fun, right? And one of the uh, big takeaways, and I really do want to emphasize this because I think I, I need to emphasize it a, a little bit more, is that it, it takes a lot of work to sell cards, my guys. Even if you have a Patreon, a YouTube, a, a eBay account, it's very tiring, very work. You have to do customer service. You have to do invoicing. You have to do collections. You have to make sure there's no chargebacks. You have to make sure there's no scams. And make sure that you have top loaders and sleeves, and you have you're protecting the cards the right way. You have to go to a post office. I know a lot of you guys say, "Oh, well, post office come to you." Yeah, it can, but sometimes you need to go to post office. You maybe you need an international stamp. Maybe you need to send it to a different country or something like that. Running a store is a full-time job. You can't part-time it, as I found out 
devastatingly found out. You need to full-time it, or at least have an employee who can full-time it and you trust. Hard to find. Bye, guys.